In the wake of two deadly massacres last weekend, gun control is once again at the forefront of our nation's politics. Last week, President Trump visited the communities of Dayton, Ohio, and El Paso, Texas, where 31 people were gunned down in mass shootings that happened less than 24 hours apart. He also said he wanted to see meaningful background checks, but did not have details on how they would get through Congress. As the president prepared to visit those grieving communities, some politicians launched criticism at him. They said Mr. Trump played a part in dividing the country with his rhetoric and used the visits as a photo op. The gun debate was also a main topic of discussion on the Sunday morning shows. Here's some of what you may have missed. I can't guarantee what we propose will eliminate every mass shooting. Uh, but what I can say is that every one of our proposals, we can get bipartisan support, Democrats and Republicans. We need to bring Ohio together. We are doing that. And we can get these things passed. And they will, each one of them, save lives. I believe very little that this president says uh, where he tweets from pulling troops out of uh, Afghanistan to that he solved the nuclear uh, crisis in North Korea. Uh, he tweets a lot of things. He says, uh, makes a lot of uh, bold statements uh, that don't just come through. He doesn't follow through. He doesn't do the things that keep our nation safe and strong. My heart breaks as everybody's does when you see what happened. There's no place for it, uh, whether it's somebody that's racist, that that hates a certain ethnic group. Uh, there's no place for those kind of attacks and attacking people based on, on their ethnicity. But to try to assign blame to somebody else, I think, is a very slippery slope uh, because the president's no more responsible for that shooting as your next guest, Bernie Sanders, is for my shooting. Look, President Trump and nobody else wants to see people mowed down and killed, and I've never said that. He does not want to see that. I think he creates a climate where we are seeing a significant increase in hate crimes in this country, mm -hmm. uh, hate crimes against Muslims, uh, against Mexicans, against Jews. He is creating the kind of divisiveness in this nation that is the last thing uh, that we should be doing. So he creates the climate. But do I think that he wants to see uh, somebody get shot? Absolutely not. Zeke Miller is a CBSN political contributor and White House reporter for the Associated Press. He joins us now from Washington. Zeke, thanks very much for being with us. We know some local politicians spoke out ahead of the president's visits. Former Congressman Beto O'Rourke and Representative Veronica Escobar said he would not be welcome in El Paso. So how was the president received? It was kind of a mixed bag. I was on that trip with him both to Ohio and then uh, on to El Paso uh, in the wake of both of those terrible shootings. And, you know, there were certainly protests there, which is unusual uh, for an American president going into a city that is reeling from a tragedy uh, for there to be protests. Um, and that, that, but that has sort of been one, uh, sort of become almost the new normal uh, with this president. Anywhere he goes, he does attract at least some. Um, a modicum amount of protests. There were larger protests that were kept away from us. We didn't really see them. We saw them on TV afterwards and when we got on the plane. Um, so, you know, by and large, you know, it was, it was a, a bit of a mixed bag. There were also a handful of Trump supporters mixed in with some of those uh, of those opponents as well. Um, it was interesting. We, we didn't really see much of the president at the hospital. They kept press back. But uh, from footage that uh, the White House put out afterwards and also from supporters put, posted online, you know, we can see the president's reaction with, really with medical professionals was there. He was, you know, he was not uh, meeting with very many victims. Uh, the Washington Post reported, for instance, that uh, some of the victims at the hospital in, in El Paso didn't want to meet with him. But he was meeting with medical professionals, law enforcement. Those were, that, that was predominantly uh, the folks who we spent most of the time with uh, on that trip. And Zeke, the president said that he supports changing background check laws and even went so far as to say he thought the National Rifle Association would get on board. So is anything actually happening on the, leg on the legislative front? Really, so far right now, it's a whole lot of talk. Uh, there are a couple of individual uh, bills uh, that, that individual lawmakers are talking about, even you know, trying to reach bipartisan compromises on, whether it be red flag laws or uh, uh, specific elements of background check legislation. But there's no widespread effort just yet. The president has made clear that he is not going to lead on this. He's going to defer to congressional leaders to bring him legislation. At the same time, we saw him on, on Friday before he left uh, for New Jersey, uh, sort of uh, staking a bit of his own political capital on this and essentially saying that he thinks that he can bring along Republicans onto an issue where 
where they have been pretty stubborn on in the past, uh, strengthening uh, background check legislation, red flag laws, and the like. Uh, but you know, the devil here is really in the details. What does a, a stronger or more meaningful background checks, as the president puts it, what does that actually mean when you're sitting down to write re uh, regulations and legislation? Uh, what does a red flag, red flag law mean? That uh, you know, how effective can it possibly be? Can it withstand legal challenge? That will almost certainly come come along. And also with, with the NRA, that that's a, a key uh, a component of the president's support. He believes they're a valuable base. Uh, the president himself said, uh, you know. Even if the NRA isn't 100 percent on board, he thinks he at least can buy them, sort of at least not to sort of be an obstacle to that legislation. That remains to be seen as well. That has not been the case every time these, is these issues have been debated over the last decade so far. Right. It's very much an open question. Uh, Zeke, let's talk about immigration. On Wednesday, 680 people working at chicken processing plants in Mississippi were uh, taken into custody in what officials say were the largest immigration raids in a decade. The raids coincided with the president's visit to El Paso, a largely immigrant and Latino community. The timing of these raids has been questioned. Do we know anything about the planning that went into this? Well, talking to uh, federal officials on that and White House officials, they were aware of, of, of these raids. They're sort of, given that scale, it does sort of filter around m much of the federal government. But they've been in the works for a very long time. Raids like that don't just happen overnight. That investigation had been going on. Even some of the court documents that had come out had been, it, 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 it is not the sort of thing that they turned on Monday to take place Wednesday. That said, the timing is a, is a bit, uh, uh, you know, unfortunate. That's sort of the way White House aides are, just, are describing it. At the same time, the president, uh, you know, was very clear that he is uh, supportive of the efforts of uh, uh, of ICE and, and other um, uh, and, and other immigration authorities to uh, to strengthen the deportation and removal of people who are in this country illegally. Some who have already ha have had uh, permanent removal orders uh, in place already. And the president, in his own words, called it a deterrent and it's a signal that he is not uh, you know deterred himself by the uh, by the backlash that those raids had sparked and uh, would like to see more of that going forward. Right. So it sounds as though this very much is going to be something that we will be seeing in the future. Uh, raids like the ones that took place in Mississippi. Certainly, and the question is, you know, uh, and, and that was so, such a big component of the backlash is that the, the, the immediate personal effect of, the, of these raids are on the people who are, in, in that sense, the most vulnerable, the employees. Yes, they might not have the legal right to be here in this country, but they, they, are, they are not as well off as the people who are hiring them and making use of their labor. Uh, and uh, will the federal, will federal officials actually bring down, you know, sort of bring down the hammer on uh, the companies and the, and, the, and the employers who are, who are making use of that labor. Uh, that's sort of the, the, the big disconnect. And we haven't really heard the president talk a lot about that so far. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if that, in fact, is a topic that does come up as the issue of immigration continues to be debated. Um, Zeke, let's turn to foreign policy. North Korea fired two more short-range ballistic missiles into the Sea of Japan on Saturday. They are seen as a response to ongoing military exercises between the U.S. and South Korea. Just before the most recent launch, President Trump said he received a, quote, beautiful letter from the North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. What can you tell us about this letter? Uh, we don't know very much about it. The president wouldn't, uh, uh, wouldn't tell us what was in it. But there, was, there are indications that the president uh, sort of thinks that he got some sort of assurances from Kim Jong-un that these were purely uh, sort of proportional responses, uh, for, for, if you will, sort of the sense that these were the acceptable risks of a uh, of expected counter to, towards U.S. South Korean uh, military exercises, which have been sort of largely tabletop at, uh, exercises. They have not been sort of, uh, you know large scale military drills since the president did scale those back uh, about a year and a half ago. But you know, in terms of what that actually means, uh, you know. It, any efforts by the North Koreans to sort of uh, improve and test their missile systems by experts is viewed as a as a step backwards in these nuclear negotiations. Uh, the president, though, sort of seems to be keen on uh, you know at least keeping uh, hopes up, uh, keeping an optimistic tone alive, uh, and now leaving open the, pro uh, the prospect of a fourth meeting between himself and Kim Jong Un. At the same time, all this is happening. There's been no concrete uh, movements, no talks um, that were agreed to a month ago when the president and Kim Jong Un met um, at the border at Panmunjom. The, those ta the talks, the staff level talks that they had agreed to at that meeting, have not begun yet. Hmm. So it, so far, there's a whole lot of talk, um, some missile firings, and some and drills, but no actual substantive negotiations on the nuclear program. All right, we'll continue to watch that. Zeke Miller in Washington for us. Zeke, thank you. Thank you very much.